Hi, I'm Susan Lappin, and I have been listening to your terrific series where you are helping people learn to communicate better, that the words that come out of their mouth that tell the thoughts that are in their head should be able to come out sounding better and being more clear. And last time I heard you say that you should practice reading aloud from material that sound like the way you want to sound. I said, don't try and do double duty. Don't try and make, don't try and do two things at once. Don't try and study a textbook and also gain the benefits of reading aloud. Study at one time and do your 90 minutes a week of practice another. Don't tell me you're going to give me an well, exception. Well, no, you gave an exception. You gave an exception. You said the speeches of great people yes. like Abraham Lincoln or, or Winston Churchill or going back to some ancient Roman orators, you're not going to want to sound like them, but their speech has so much beauty in the way the words are strung together and the poets, almost like poetry. Yes, it is. And you do want to pick up cadence. And I have another way to do that. And this is a wonderful way to do double duty. And that is to find a three-year-old or a four-year-old and read aloud to them part of the time. If it's What's, your own kid, that's great. It, or rent, rent a kid if you have to. <laughs> Someone will be happy to share a child, but if it's your own child, this is a wonderful way, and it is double duty because you're you're reading, you're spending time with your child. But what's wonderful about children's picture books, and I happen to have one of my favorite, I must have read this, I think I've read this 3,000 times, But No Elephants by Jerry Smath. And what's wonderful about it is when you're reading a book like that to children, you have to use different voices and you have to put the expression and the emotion into your voices. And here's what the really great part is, you get feedback. Because if you're not doing a good job, that child's going to walk away. And if you're doing a good job, they're going to say, oh, read it again. Please read it again. And so you immediately know and you can and you, you learn to slow down. You learn that you're, you're not racing your way to get through the book. You're telling an exciting, dramatic picture. And so and then, similarly in a speech, uh, learning that it's not just a case of reading through or getting through a few paragraphs in a monotone, but you learn that there is such a thing as modulating your voice. Your voice might rise up, and then there are times that it might drop. There are times you're going to speak much more quickly in order to convey a sense of rapid excitement. And there are other times where you might pause noticeably and perceptibly between words. It's kept snowing and snowing. Take us, snowing. take us through <laughs> no, a little people, bit of the book. <laughs> no, that's okay. But that's how it goes. And so that is one piece of advice of a great way to, to multitask and learn how to Grandma speak Grandma Tildy lived oh. all alone. <laughs> she worked hard every day. She had no time to play. One day a man came to her house. He was selling pets. Would you like to buy a canary bird? Asks the man. Very well, said Grandma Tildy. But, but no, 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 elephant. no, 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 but no elephants. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Onwards and upwards.